Hey y'all, what's up? It's Noelle with Baker's Backyard Bounty. There is still snow and we are getting out of the house for the first time in like, what, Reed, a week? You are up there. I am. <laughs> yeah, he's been at work. But before we go, some refreshments. Lily's getting really good at taking care of her sister. So there is not a lot that I love about the gold besides things slow down and it gets quieter. Um, but I do love winter wear. Look at this cute little beanie. Ah! <laughs> so the reason why we're getting out today is to go to our favorite spot. It's called Get Healthy here in Rockwall. It has a ton of um, just organic goodies. I think they order from Azure Market. Um, or Azure Standard, but anyways, we love this place. We're here to stock up. We come about once a month and stock up on meat, and uh, just lo and behold, we ran out right as the ice storm was finishing up, so we got really lucky. I want to give you a shout out. So one reason we love this place is because they have um, just like a lot of bulk staples. So with COVID, a lot of um, bulk sections got x nayed which makes sense. Um, but the store has literally three aisles and that's why we love it. So we buy like bulk nuts and uh, our favorite Redmond's Real Salt in bulk. They also have sugar, popcorn, raw, um, cacao. They have a lot of just like staples um, that we can buy and, and it just saves on packaging and saves on trips to the store and so we've really been loving that. We also go through a ton of milk, and because we're in an ice storm, <laughs> every place is sold out of our favorite milk. Also, the stores here are sold out of eggs, so we feel extra lucky that we um, have our backyard layers. But um, Milking, this is a really good milk that's local. It's near Waco, Texas, so pretty local to us, and uh, it's just great quality milk. Can you go put those in the bag for Mama? Yeah, put them in the bag. Yeah, thank you, helper. So Lily is driving us right now. Just kidding. We're waiting on Daddy in the parking lot while he checks out. Um, but just, I know um, most of us have probably, especially Daddy. here in the South, have learned a lot through this past week, this snowmageddon. Um, and one thing I have learned is um, our resilience. Um, there are people freaking out over no meat, no eggs, no bread at the store. And it's like, we got bread, we make it. We got eggs in the backyard. We have seeds <laughs> so we can grow food if we, you know, we're not by any means like 100% self-sufficient in our backyard, but we have options. And when you have options, there's just less fear. And um, I don't know, I'm just really, really grateful that we started on this I don't know, gardening, homesteading, trying to produce more than we consume each day kind of journey. Uh, before COVID, before um, snowpocalypse hit, um, it just seems like God is good in um, preparing our hearts and our minds for just kind of like lean seasons when <laughs> life, life as we know it gets upturned. And um, I think that's really what being resilient is about is like when things don't go as planned, when things are out of your control, how do you Daddy, respond? Daddy, <laughs> and how do you Daddy. not only survive, but I know this is cheesy, but like thrive, that's resilience. And so um, all that to say, like, I just hope that our girls learn uh, <laughs> learn resiliency and the power of creativity and um, <laughs> being able to nurture your family even when uh, things are a little bit turned upside down. Like being snowed in for a week or get down. Oh my gosh, she's climbing on top of the car. Okay, another lesson learned through all this is just how... Uh, beautiful and strong our community is so people from church reaching out our church served as a warming station where you could charge your phone and get coffee because they had electricity um which is just such a blessing to offer that to the community um our neighbors like checking in with our neighbors them offering food if we needed it i traded my in-laws they stopped by 
and uh, they couldn't get bread, Daddy! and I didn't want to drive my car by myself while Reeve was at work, and I couldn't get milk for Lily, and uh, so we traded milk for bread, which is just like cool, you know, to be able to do that Daddy! and offer that. I made an extra loaf, um, and they had some groceries in the car, so friends checking in. Um, I don't know, like family members calling just to make sure everyone's okay. Like my brother offered up his place, they had electricity, and I just feel like just so supported. Even, I mean, we can't live on lettuce, you know, if we grew lettuce and bread and eggs forever, it would get us through probably a week. Um, but I, I don't know, even if we couldn't get through with that, we don't have like a ton of meat in the backyard to, to process or anything like that it's like we have our community and that is really a beautiful thing and in times like the, these when there's like crisis or things get um, turned upside down again it's like who's there for you and now we know like Mom. we have built a beautiful network Mom. and a beautiful community and again just like Mom. feeling super what is she doing Mom. she's yelling at everyone in the parking lot relax <laughs> feeling super blessed with that so uh some of the beauty that's come out of this whole situation and you know we're faring pretty well but it's like i know a lot of people in the nation especially in texas are not and still don't have water reed went on so many busted pipe calls carbon monoxide calls um it's just like house fires it was like a crazy couple of shifts for him um and so i know a lot of people are suffering and that's really um really valid as well like not everyone's thriving with community and it's not all rainbows um and ted cruz went to cancun i'm just saying what what anyways not to get political or anything but um you know i'm keenly aware of that and also i've been just like praying so much that God would <laughs> just be with us, you know, like be with all those who are suffering, who have had major losses, especially with their homes and these fires. Um, it's just, yeah, it's just crazy. And it makes you just want to like snuggle your family close and hold your kids a little tighter and just like count all your stars um, for just the things that we have to be grateful for. So a lesson in gratitude as well. Y'all hear this sound? It's the sound of ice melting. Girlies, it's melting. Excited? So I'm gonna check on my potatoes here in this raised bed. It's been like three weeks since I planted them and I just wanna see if there's any activity going on now that the snow is thawing. All right, so it looks like the eyes are starting to sprout, which is good. That's a good sign. It can take up to, <laughs> Louis, up to 28 days, I think, for them to really start growing. So I have, I don't know, I have some time, especially since it's been snowy this past uh, week. It's been really, really cold. So it looks like activity is happening, just um, slow. All right, guys, the snow is fully melted. It's gone and we're pretty relieved. Uh, but one thing that I've found is that two of our buff Orpingtons have frostbite on their combs. That's kind of a bummer. See the black up top on their combs? <laughs> yeah, that's dead tissue. So we're not really gonna do any interventions right now. I'm just gonna watch it um, and see if they are eating well and drinking water well. Um, please. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna go check on them. But uh, just make sure it's not interfering with like their normal functioning. Um, I know it can't. Hey. It can be really painful, so I'm also gonna check their feet to make sure that there's no frostbite on any of their toes. So with frostbite, it happens more often to chickens that have bigger combs that have 
are closer, you know, to the elements, you could say. Um, and so our buff Orpingtons have the highest combs of any of our chickens. And uh, so that's not really surprising. I read that you could rub Vaseline on them before the cold temps. I didn't do that. Call me a bad chicken mom. I just really didn't expect it to get so bad here in Texas for so long. And um, never just been through this with chickens and probably never will have to do this again. Um, but yeah, now I'm, I'm really wishing I had done that. <laughs> Brussels sprouts came through like a champ. They look really like unaltered by all the snow. I mean, truly, thank goodness that we are transitioning into spring. So a lot of this stuff was gonna have to come out anyways um, and make way for uh, just like the spring and summer crops. But um, yeah, not not wanting to go through all that again <laughs> with the snow. Um, just gonna be pulling out what really looks beyond repair or what I no longer really need and feeding that to the chickens. Um, like I don't need to hold on to that broccoli. There's no reason to, you know, like let that go. And um, then working on my transplants that I've been in the house for this whole past week, uh, potting those up and just getting them um, boosted before they start hardening off coming outside for a few hours a day, just getting acclimated to the weather. like mush <laughs> it's so mushy so we'll just pull that out and that's gonna go to the chickens we will give that to the chickens no. can you throw it to them What Lily and I are doing. Yeah, thank you for watering. Hang on. We are taking these styrofoam cups, which um, I hate styrofoam. We had these left over from some event um, and I snagged them. Ooh. And I'm gonna be poking holes in the bottom, putting some soil in, and just up potting some of these like tomatoes and tomatillos that need more space. As always, thank you guys for hanging out with us. We have some big plans for the upcoming week, um, making a rabbit tractor, just getting our beds ready and prepared for spring now that we're through the snow apocalypse. Um, but may you find the bounty in your own life and all the beauty that it holds. Until next time.